Forget-me-not is a device to help you organize and recover information you once had, but without the need to file or index it explicitly. Instead, Forget-me-not indexes everything by the setting in which you encountered the information. Simply by going about your everyday business, a continuous record is constructed of your context. There's no need to interact with Forget-me-not to do this. Using wireless technology, it communicates with nearby equipment to construct this biography automatically. Forget-me-not includes an interface for searching and browsing your biography using features you can remember about your previous context in order to locate other information. There are many things which Forget-me-not can record. Let's illustrate a few of them. Here we see Mike taking a phone call from Mick asking Mike to bring a specification yeah, so document to a design meeting in the conference room. Mike is now on his way to the meeting with Mick and Richard in the conference room. And uh, up here, the producer... Oh, here's Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi. Hi. I brought you that specification, Mick. Oh, great. Mike Thanks. beams the specification to Mick and receives a copy of a sketch from okay, Richard. Thanks. I got it. Uh, I want to give you that sketch too, actually, while you're here. Okay, thanks. After the meeting, Mike beams a copy of the sketch to a nearby printer. Returning to his room, Mike emails the sketch to Marge. Mike can browse or search through his biography by touching the screen or pressing one of the three blue buttons. The top line of the display contains the subject of the biography, Mike in this case. The remaining lines show a section of Mike's biography. Each line starts with a date and time, in this case the 25th of January 1994 at 1445 and continues with an iconic representation of the event. Here, Mike joins Peter in Peter's office. Each user can replace the default icons with others that are more memorable. In any case, pressing on an icon reveals more information about it. Mike, can you let me have the sketch that Richard gave you at the design meeting? Yes, of course. Imagine that some weeks after the design meeting, Christine, who was unable to attend, asks Mike for a copy of Richard's sketch. Mike does not need to know where he filed the sketch. He can retrieve it by context. He knows that Richard gave him the document in the conference room. He could scroll back through his biography using the blue buttons, but that could take a very long time. Instead, he filters the view of his biography to show only his meetings with Richard by dragging Richard's icon up to the top line. Now, only his meetings with Richard are showing. Incidentally, because Richard must be in every line, his icon is factored out of the filtered biography. Mike can restrict his view still further by dragging the conference room to the top line too. Only a couple of meetings match this pattern, one of which Mike realizes was probably too long ago, and so he investigates the other one. Removing the filter, Mike recognizes the phone call he received just before the design meeting, and the other events that took place during and after it. He double checks that this is the right document by clicking on it. At this point, he would beam the document to Christine, or perhaps print a copy. Although we've only described the biography for a person, Mike in our example, in principle any object can have a biography. For example, Mike can view the biography of the sketch, subject to access restrictions, by replacing the subject icon with that of the sketch. Here we see the same events from the sketch's point of view. 
Although we've shown how forget-me-not can be used to locate documents, the same techniques can be used to recall such diverse information as the names of people you've met, a complicated procedure, the way to the conference room, or even where you've left your umbrella. <laughs>